And then the human says, that's not my wife, and those are tentacles. Well, I thought it was funny. I got it. Ha ha ha. Bob, haven't you got some work to do in the cargo bay? I'll explain it to you later. Maybe you should focus less on jokes and more on your other strengths. Gee, thanks. Wouldn't want you to be patronizing or anything. Are you sure you just didn't tell it wrong, Lieutenant? I told it perfectly. You guys just have no sense of humor. You see, the whole point of the joke is that... Mayday, mayday, mayday. This is Sigma-4 Colony Biological Research Station. We are in desperate trouble and require immediate assistance. Our colony is under attack from native flora. I repeat, colony under attack from native flora. If anybody can hear us, please send help. Sigma-4, this is Falcon-1. We are receiving your distress call. Please say again. Your colony is being attacked by native plant life? We are life? in grave danger. If anyone is receiving this message, please help us. Why don't they respond, Sergeant? The distress call is set to transmit only. They can't receive replies. There must be some kind of fault with their communication system. Are there any other ships within range of the colony, Professor? Negative. We're the closest vessel by some margin. Right. It's up to us, then. Set the course for Sigma-4, Sergeant. Full light speed. Yes, sir. I guess I'll have to explain the joke later, then. What do you know about the Sigma-4 colony, Professor? Well, Sigma-4 was settled about two years ago and has a population of only 76. It's one of the outlying colonies in deep space. That's why there wouldn't be any other ships out this way. I seem to remember it's a fairly barren planet covered mostly by desert with only a limited number of plant and animal species. Why would anyone want to establish a colony on a planet like that? The radiation from the Sigma system's sun is rather unique in that it seems to be able to purify many substances from harmful bacteria or poisons. The Galactic Science Commission and the Space Guard were keen to make further studies, and Sigma-4 was the only habitable planet in the system. I believe the chief scientist, Professor Fabian, was making good progress until he tragically passed away about a month ago in some kind of accident. But if Sigma-4 is a desert world, how can the colonists be under attack from native plants? It doesn't make any sense. You're right about that, Sergeant. There's something very strange about this whole situation. I don't know about the rest of you, but that doesn't look like a desert world to me. Uh, I, I don't understand. There should be nowhere near that much plant coverage on Sigma-4. A few small areas with edible roots and cacti, certainly. But not a whole forest like that. Well, we're not going to get any answers from up here in orbit. Take us down to the colony, Sergeant. I'll try, sir, but it may be tricky. My scans indicate the colony is right in the middle of that jungle, and I can't even detect the landing area from this distance. The foliage is too thick. We'll do the best you can. Professor? Lieutenant? Let's break out the machetes from the storage lockers. Something tells me we're gonna need them down there. Must be the space gardeners now. Ha ha ha. Oh, very funny, Bob. Just keep clearing a path. The lieutenant's right. You really don't have a sense of humor. Can you hear those noises as the plants are cut? Like whining sounds. As if the plants were experiencing pain. Yeah, you're right. But they're just plants. They couldn't be feeling anything. Are you detecting any life signs, Professor? Yes, from the building over there. Can you see it through the trees? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, everybody, let's head in that direction. What the heck was that? Ouch. That was not very pleasant, you know. A robot could get a headache from that sort of treatment. This must be what the colonists meant when they said they were under attack from native plant life. Everybody, run!
In here, quickly. That was a close one. I'm glad you all made it here in one piece. Who are you? Commander Ryder, Falcon 1, and this is my crew. We received your distress call and came as soon as we could. Thank you so much, Commander. I'm Dr. Sykes, acting chief scientist of the Sigma 4 colony, and this is Dr. Lyons. As you can see, the colony is in great danger and we're at our wits end. We've been holed up in here for the past two days. What exactly has happened here? Sigma 4 is supposed to be a barren desert world. Yet now there seems to be more plant life here than in the Amazon rainforest. Yeah, up until two days ago, that was a triumph for us. But, as you can see, things have taken a rather unexpected turn. I think you'd better start from the beginning, Dr. Sykes. Tell us everything that's happened here. Of course, Commander. Well, as you know, Sigma-4 is covered mostly by desert, with only a few pockets of edible flora scattered across the planet's surface. We were sent here to study and to try to harness the effects of the radiation emitted by the Sigma system's sun. It has the potential to cleanse and purify certain minerals, oils, water, etc. It can even counteract the effect of some poisons or diseases in organic tissue. I heard you made some impressive progress in your research before your chief scientist's death. Yes, we had. Professor Fabian discovered that by mixing high voltage electricity with the sun's radiation, he could not only purify the native Sigmatia trees to make them fit for human consumption, but he could also increase the size and abundance of the plants tenfold. As a result, we went from living in a desert to living in a forest in a matter of days. What about Dr. Fabian? What happened to him? He commenced the experiment by hooking a high voltage generator up to the biggest concentration of sigmatia trees in the area. Unfortunately, something went wrong, and he electrocuted himself before the generator blew up. He never lived to see the results of his work. There wasn't even anything left of his body by the time we got there. But whatever he did worked, and over the last three weeks, the Sigmatia trees have grown and grown, until the whole colony has become surrounded by this forest. It was only two days ago when the trees started attacking us, though. What could cause the plants to suddenly become so aggressive, Professor? I don't know. It must be some strange effect of the combination of the electricity and the sun's radiation that Professor Fabian didn't anticipate. The amalgamation of the energy must have been bubbling away beneath the surface of the planet right at the roots of the Sigmatia trees for the last three weeks, until they were strong enough to start lashing out. But is there any way to stop it? Go see the research notes of Fabian's, and any others you've gathered since his death. Of course! Our main research terminal is just over there. It's amazing! I mean, just look at the size of those things! Amazing isn't the word I'd use, Sergeant. I think the word would be terrifying. It's like something out of a science fiction show. Does that make us the heroes who come to save the day? I sure hope so. Yay, the space gardeners to the rescue. What was that, Bob? Oh, nothing. Any progress, Professor? Yes, I think so. I believe we need to go to the source of the trouble. Back where the experiment started in the large concentration of the Sigmatia trees. If we can set off a small explosive device filled with herbicide, I believe it will cut off the main source of energy for the plants and render them inert. Everything else will be untouched and still viable as food, but the colony would be safe from the plants as well. But how are we going to get into that area? Surely it'll be crawling with active tendrils. We won't stand a chance. If we use the teleport in Falcon 1 to transport someone right into the heart of the cluster, it would only take a few seconds to prepare the explosive device. If I went with the device, and someone else to keep me covered for those few seconds, we should be able to manage it. If you think that's the best option, Professor, then that's what we'll do. What do you need? All the necessary equipment is in the cargo bay aboard Falcon 1. Right, let's get back there then. Dr. Sykes, Dr. Lyons, you'd both better stay here, and make sure you barricade the doors once we've gone. Very good, Commander. Okay, everyone, back to Falcon 1, and watch out for the Sigmatius. Okay, Lieutenant. Are you sure you've entered the correct coordinates into the teleport? Yes, Professor. They're the exact same coordinates that you gave me. Good. Well then, I guess we're ready to go. Keep your calm channels open. 
We'll listen in and monitor you the whole way, in case anything goes wrong. Will do, sir. Ready whenever you are. Okay, Lieutenant. Activate. What's that, Professor? It looks... it looks like... Well, unless I'm mistaken, that's the generator Professor Fabian must have used to provide the electricity for his experiment. I thought Dr. Lyons said the generator was destroyed. Well, obviously it wasn't. And look, it seems as though the plants have absorbed it into themselves. That must be where they're deriving their energy. The energy wasn't bubbling away under the surface. It was building up right here. This changes everything. Commander, we have a new objective. We're going to destroy that generator. Get them! Sergeant! Professor! What's going on? It's the Sigmatia tree, sir! They've got us! We're trapped! Get them out of there, Lieutenant! I can't, sir! The teleport scanner can't differentiate the Professor or the Sergeant from the plants. I can't get a clear lock on either of them. We can't pull either of you out of there while the plants have got you. Are you sure you can't break free? No chance, sir. We're wrapped up too tight. Professor, look! What is it? What do you see? It's... it's a man, sir. But he seems to be partially morphed into a Sigmatia tree. Unless I'm very much mistaken, Sergeant, that man is no other than Professor Fabian. The body of the human you see before you is that of Professor Fabian. But his consciousness has been absorbed into the essence of the Sigmatia trees, giving us life. Glorious life. But how is that even possible? <sighs> Something clearly went wrong with Fabian's experiment, but not in the way we, we thought. The combination of the radiation and the high voltage electric shock his body received must have altered the makeup of both his and the tree's organic structure, fusing the two together. You are correct, human. We absorbed Fabian's mind and body and saw what your kind has planned for us. You plan to use us as food to nourish your pitiful animal bodies, murdering and subjugating us for your own ghastly ends. But now the tables have turned, and the food is fighting back. Now that we have the consciousness of Fabian ingrained into us, we have the awareness to defend ourselves and put the humans in their place. What are you going to do? We are going to wipe your colony from the face of this planet and absorb every last human animal just as we did to Fabian. Then we will take your ship and use it to travel to other systems, other colonies, and repeat the same process over and over again until every last human in existence becomes a Sigmatia. We will become the dominant race in this galaxy, ruling supreme over all the pathetic animal species, and prove once and for all that plant life is the superior form of existence. Okay. Is everybody clear on the plan? I'm ready, sir. Let's go get our crew back. Bob, you know what to do? Sir, I am a highly advanced robot with an eidetic memory. You don't need to tell me more than once, unless I wasn't listening the first time. Alright, let's do this. L listen to me. If there is any part of Professor Fabian still left in there, you know what you're doing is wrong. Silence, pitiful human scum! Just be reasonable. Let us take the colonists away with us in Falcon 1. Then you can have the entire planet to yourself. We'll make sure all the ships avoid the area and you'll be left to your own devices on your own world. Why should I settle for one world when we can have an entire galaxy?
Lieutenant, look out! What's keeping Bob? I don't know. Just keep firing. We need to give him as much time as we can. Good work, Bob. You did it. Yes, sir. But you might have warned me that there was only a small delay on the explosive timer. I barely made it out of there in one piece. The Sigmatia trees. Are they all dead? Not dead, Lieutenant. They're still alive as plants, but only as plants. The consciousness came from the body of Professor Fabian and the power produced by the generator. Now they've been destroyed. They'll just go back to being regular, inert Sigmatia trees. Wait, what's that? Professor Fabian? What? What's going on? Where am I? What happened here? Extraordinary. With the electricity supply gone, his metamorphosis seems to have completely reversed. He's human again. Well, Professor Fabian, have we got a story to tell you? <laughs> What's going to happen to the Sigma-4 colony now? Well, the colony will keep operating and studying the effects of the sun's radiation. Now that the trees are inert, they have a ready-made food supply in abundance. And once Professor Fabian has fully recovered, he plans to document everything he did during his experiments as a what not to do for future studies. Hopefully they can avoid anything like that happening again. Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but all that action has given me an appetite. I believe it's my turn to fix the next meal? Um, Sergeant? Yes, Lieutenant? I know space guard meals are always supposed to be healthy and nutritious, but do you think just this once? Yes. Could you hold the salad, please? 